All righty. Welcome back to Living Fed After 50. It's Friday. We are live on the Big Talker app. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We're live everywhere. So TGIF. It is. It is. It's and this week alive. has flown Everybody. by. I have to tell you, I had a great week. Um, just an awesome week of training at the studio. People this morning, they got me juiced. They were all happy. They were calling me names, which every trainer likes. Just a great day, great week. And now it's going to get even better. That's the best part. I've been looking forward to this show for weeks now. Oh, week. Weeks. But just to quickly do some quick business. Hey. If you're listening to us on the Big Talker, you already have the app, but if you're not, you need to go get that app. So the Big Talker app, which is available on Google Play and Apple, go get it. That way you can listen to not just our fine program, but the other one I do on Tuesday nights called All Things Brunswick. Plus, I guest star, not host, guest star um, on Wednesdays with our producer, TK, on his show, which is The Asylum. So you get even more of me, uh, but not so much of Lori. Um, but you got to get the, the apps to do that. And as always, as we are live, as we said, on YouTube and Facebook, feel free to ask questions. Jump into the chats on them. Um, ask any question you ha you have. We will do our best to answer it. You can also call into the show. I'm going to see if I get the number right for once. <laughs> Lori's laughing already. 910-444-0281. Number's up on the screen also. All right, let's get into the good stuff. So I want to start this out before I throw it to Lori to say that we're, we're, we are truly honored with our guest today and, and what he's going to talk about. Really, guys, you really need to listen to this. Um, I met Greg probably six, seven years ago. He is one of my heroes. And I'm not saying that because he's listening in right now. He genuinely is. So I'm going to throw it to Lori. Lori, why don't you introduce our amazing guest? All right. So today we have Greg Justice with us. We are super excited. Uh, Greg is a Hall of Fame trainer and author. Uh, so, Greg, we welcome you here today. Welcome. And before we get started, where are you today, Greg? Well, today, uh, you know, when when <laughs> at first when I heard TGIF, I thought, first of all, wait, today's Thursday, so I'm a day off. Uh, <laughs> but it is indeed Friday, and I am in Tampa, Florida, as far as I know. As far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you I travel up all over. Hours, uh, <laughs> but, but more importantly, I'm honored to be right here on this show with the two of you. Well, uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, what are you doing in Tampa, Florida? Well, this is uh, one of my three companies called Endless Rope, and it is a piece of fitness equipment that is a scalable uh, rope climbing machine that allows you to go from three pounds of resistance climbing a rope all the way up to supporting your entire body weight. And so we are at the United States Gymnastics Championships here in Tampa, and uh, one of our athletes actually... Uh, Brody Malone is uh, one of our partners in the business, and he's also the top male gymnast in the country as well. And he just represented the United States at the Olympics uh, last year. And so it's an th honor to be with him here. And we're just uh, promoting and uh, selling our endless rope. That's great. I did see the post on Facebook about you being in Tampa and with Brody, so I figured I'd throw it out there, um, <laughs> well, well, which is that. great. Uh, My pleasure. Yeah, no, great My to be pleasure. here in Tampa. We are glad that you are here with us. So we do have some questions for us. Um, for us or for him? Oh, for him. There's Lori go. Yeah, there I go. So, so yes. Yeah, so, go or you, oh, let no, me start. If, um, can I jump in? Huh? Cause can I jump in for a second? Oh, if you must. I know you want. I we're so excited to talk to Greg, but one of the things that uh, the reasons we have Greg on is one, I want to get all as many pearls of wisdom out of him as I can, because he is a hall of fame trainer. Um, but really he just released a new book that he co-authored with um, Elaine LaLanne called pride and discipline, the legacy of Jack LaLanne. And uh, as I've started reading the book, I'm not completely through it. I'll be honest with it, but it's, it's a book you want to read, even if you're not into training. This, 
the the wisdom that Jack Lalane had that Elaine and Greg share can be applied to anything in life. I truly believe that. And I want to start before we get too much further with a quote that's right in the beginning of the book because it I believe this to my core, and it really hit me between the eyes, even though I've said it for years, which is, and this is a quoting Jack LaLanne, people have to take responsibility for themselves and do something about it. They have to have pride and discipline. If you have these two elements, you won't fail in life's endeavors. Truer words have never been spoken, written, or whatever you want to say. What do you think about that, Greg? Oh, indeed. And that's where the name of the book came from, Pride and Discipline, because Jack always talked about having pride and discipline in the way you present yourself in an everyday life. And, uh, you know, truly, he was a um, uh, an amazing mentor uh, and he practiced what he preached. And I, as a mentee, along with a lot of the others coming from the late 70s and early 80s into the fitness industry, uh, it was put upon us to pass on his legacy, and that's what he would tell his mentees. He 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 would he didn't want credit for things. He was never about uh, getting credit. All he would say is, "Whatever you have learned from me, pass it on." And so mm-hmm. that's what I am doing through this book. Uh, and and then there's some a story which I'll share at some point during the uh, interview about more about the book. But uh, I'm just trying to pass on everything that that I learned from Jack. Uh, And I first met him when I was an eight-year-old child uh, in Eastern Kentucky, sitting on the sofa, being, you know, home from school because of strep throat, turning the TV on as a, you know, an eight-year-old young man and seeing this guy working out. And I must say at that moment, that's a defining moment in my life uh, because as an eight-year-old young boy, I can just remember the impact that seeing him doing what he was doing. uh, And, and, you know, again, I didn't understand what it would lead to in my life and career, but I can look at that at this moment in time and understand the impact that it had and what it led, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. Wow. It's great. It's it's funny you mention that because I was thinking about when, when I was first, I've never met Jack personally, but I was introduced to him. It was either Merv Griffin or Mike Douglas, one of those talk shows that used to be on in the afternoons. And I remember vividly myself, and I was, I'm guessing seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 years old, somewhere in there in the early seventies. And Jack came on and he was wearing a yellow jumpsuit. I think it was. And I would, and remember watching that and you know, I, I mean, I was a young child. I wasn't into fitness per se at that point, but to this day, I remember that, and I remember yeah. him doing push-ups and and various things. And maybe subconsciously, he had the same effect on me. I know in my case, um, my my heroes were Schwarzenegger for lifting, but Richard Simmons and all them, and they were mentees of Jack. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. In fact, you'll find that a lot of the folks that came out of the 70s and 80s that, you know, burst onto the fitness scene, virtually every one of them came through the, uh, you know, the Jack LaLanne <laughs> legacy, uh, you know, including the, the Tony Hortons and, and the Jake Steinfelds and the Tony Littles, uh, Denise Austin, Kathy Smith, all of those names that really burst on the scene in the 80s. Um, came through the Jack system, so to speak. And, you know, so much of of what the industry has now, um, starting with a lot of the equipment that Jack invented and never got a single patent. Um, And, you know, talking about the Smith machine, which he called the squat machine, uh, the leg extension, the leg curl, uh, Jack invented the resistance band. You know, every single trainer now uses resistance band training. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, he he. So he he's just responsible for so much in the industry. And uh, I just think it's important for our industry not to forget from where we came. And really, this book is about ground zero of the industry, and that includes his wife Elaine, uh, who we call Lala. So Elaine, Lala, Lelaine. Um, you know, those two were the power couple um, 
of the fitness industry. And, and, you know, we refer to Elaine as the first lady of fitness. And she, at 96 and a half years of age, as we sit wow. here today, um, is still as remarkable um, as she was the first time I met her. And, and you know, her mind is just absolutely 100% there. She's still doing push-ups and uh, is just, uh, you know, is inspiring. And I want to be just like her when I grow up. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can become the second lady. You, Lori could be the second lady. Uh, yeah, I, I don't could think I could compete with women. La 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 Lane. We, we will never be able to accomplish <laughs> what they have, but we can certainly dream, can't we? Um, well, so let's talk a little bit about the book. Um, just in general, like you can't, you've kind of described why you wrote it, but what do you think are some of the most important points that are in the book that our, our listeners would really want to hear about? Yeah, well, I'm going I'm to roll back even to the the impetus, the the very beginning, the genesis of the project, and it really started about 13 years ago in my mind, and and part of this because Jack was really one of the first people that talked about mindset. Um, he called it mind mind power, and now you know we kind of term it mindset. Um, but but uh, for my 49th birthday. Um, so again, about 13 years ago, Jack sent me a lovely personal uh, note wishing me a happy 49th birthday and wishing me 49 more. And um, that really touched me. Uh, you know, it just it, it was an emotional uh, time because, you know, I just was so appreciative of my mentor, somebody who I knew was a busy man and always on the go to take the time to. Uh, remember me and think about me and wish me a happy birthday. And I can remember at that time setting an intention. And, you know, it's the power of manifestation because I I set an intention to do something. And again, I didn't know how it would manifest to honor him, to further his legacy on a very large scale. Um, And again, I, I didn't know what it looked like at the time, you know, roll the clock forward 10 years or so. And it was at that time I thought I need to reach out to Elaine because uh, she and I had been friends. And uh, uh, again, she's an inspiring figure herself. Um, and I reached out and I said, you know, Elaine, I really have this on my heart that I, I really feel like we need to do something for the next generation of coaches and trainers to remember what Jack brought and did to this for this industry. And um I do a lot of speaking um, for the fitness industry, and I can remember there's a section in in one of my speeches where I talk about legacy and, you know, leaving a legacy, a positive legacy of change. And I I would always mention Jack's name and his legacy, and I would look out into the audience and I could see that about half of the people I was talking to had no clue who I was talking about. And that bothered me because... (laughs) Jack LaLanne is fitness royalty. He is ground zero of this industry that we call the fitness industry today. And, you know, virtually uh, all the equipment in every gym you can see around the world has Jack's thumbprint on it at some point. And so it it always bothered me. And so uh, I could start seeing the manifestation of that intention that I set uh, several years earlier. And when I reached out to Elaine, she was thrilled to be able to do that because she likes to say that all she wants as she passes on into the next part of her journey is to see that Jack got the credit or gets the credit for what he brought to the industry. And so through this book, through Pride and Discipline, The Legacy of Jack LaLanne, we are able to go through the history of the fitness industry, so to speak, where he, in 1936, opened the first modern health spa in Oakland. And this, he was a, and I want you to think about this for a second, a 21-year-old man in 1936 opening a, you know, the, <laughs> the world's first modern-day health spa. And, uh, you know, the the guts that it would take and the fortitude and then the mental power to do something like that when doctors and other health professionals called him a nut and they called him a charlatan and a quack. And one of my favorite quotes of Jack's is, you know, back then they called me a quack and a charlatan. And now they call me the authority. 
And so, right. you know, he brought along the health and fitness world, the, the <clears throat> medical industry, and taught them what, you know, what they could learn from him and what health and fitness can do. Um, and so, you know, I, I just I just wanted to make sure that the next generation, the people that I would talk to, the coaches, the trainers that didn't know the name Jack LaLanne, that they would remember the name. And going forward, I want everybody in the industry to know uh, what Jack did for us, because without Jack's mentorship, you know, 50 years after he opened the first modern health spa, I opened Kansas City's original personal fitness training center in May of 1986. So literally a half a century later, um, I was able to do um, something because of what he was strong enough in the mind, body, and spirit to do as a 21-year-old man. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, you know, we talked about the book a little bit and Jack LaLanne and his impact. So before we go into our break, what about you, Greg Justice? Why don't you tell the world who you are? <laughs> well, wow. I am, I, am a mentee, I am a mentee of Jack LaLanne and virtually everything that I teach comes from his philosophy. Um, I did. I opened uh, Kansas City's original personal fitness training center in May of 1986. Um, and it was partially uh, spurred on through another one of Jack's mentees, Jake Steinfeld. I bought a 25 cent book called Body by Jake at a church garage sale and started to read about this guy, Jake Steinfeld, who opened uh, pretty much one of the first Hollywood uh, personal training businesses and was training Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford and all these amazing celebrities. And I learned from him that a business like this could exist. Now, I knew that I couldn't charge what he was charging, with, which was something like $250 a half hour in the 1980s. Um, but wow. I could scale it back to a conservative market in the Midwest and make a living. And I have made a living beyond my wildest dreams uh, for the past almost 40 years now and just feel nothing but blessed to be in this amazing industry. That's great. And you, you are impacting so many lives because you're continuing on what Jack does or did, which is you are mentoring others and spreading the word. Because let's be honest, Jack essentially invented what we do as a career. He invented not just the gyms, but, you know, he, I think about he was on TV when TV first came around. Um, I don't know the exact year his show started, but in the 50s. 51. 51. So he was doing, I believe, five days a week for yep. 10, 12 years, if I remember correctly. Well, he invented that years, as actually. well. Oh, he did the show for 34 years straight? Oh, I didn't know that. So, so the first nine, first eight years, 1951 through 1959, they were local in Oakland. And then they moved uh, and started the um, national you know, syndicated show in 1959. And it aired from so 1951 all the way to 1984. Um, oh, wow. yeah, 34 years. And, uh, you know, um, virtual training is very popular these days and really became, you know, exploded overnight when uh, COVID hit. But yeah. what people don't understand is Jack LaLanne was the truth, the first true virtual trainer back in 1951, where he was able to share his message of fitness and uh, wellness with the world. Thanks. Excellent. All right. All right. On that note, I think this is a good time to go to break. What do you think? I think it's a All fabulous right. idea. So TK, kind of springing it on you, but it's a perfect time. We'll take a little break, pay some bills, and then we'll be back with Greg Justice. To living fit after 50 with our guest greg justice uh, before we continue on the conversation don't forget you can call in and ask questions uh the number is 910-444-0281 hey i'm getting good at that first couple of weeks i blew until it until we change it um and also a reminder you can uh Check out our webpage, livingfitafter50.com. We have prior shows on there, um, 
lots of good stuff coming. We've got some new programs we're going to be sharing on there. So jump on over to livingfitafter50.com. And we are back. So I'll let Lori jump in here. All right. So if you're just joining us, you missed a great first part. You'll have to go back to that. You can go back and watch the replay. You'll have to. But uh, just to recap, we do have Greg Justice here, Hall of Fame trainer and author of Pride and Discipline, The Legacy of Jack LaLanne. He is donning a black Jack Jack LaLanne jumpsuit on. You can only see the top part. (laughs) No, just kidding. (laughs) Uh. All right. So, Greg, just a few more questions for you, and then we'll go back to um, a couple of questions with the book. Uh, You have been a trainer now for five decades. Uh, So what do you think the biggest change in training philosophy is at this time? Yeah, well, I can tell you, when I uh, started in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, there was a big divide. You know, this this industry of aerobics was really starting to come on the scene, and then you had uh, bodybuilding on the other end of it, but both were in the fitness realm, right? Well, what Mm -hmm. happened over the course of the next many years is those two worlds started to collide. Um, Back in the early 80s, they would always tell you, don't do weight training and cardio work uh, together. You know, it's like they should never cross (laughs) uh, pollinate. (laughs) But um, uh, instinctively, because what I had learned from Jack in my own athletic career, it didn't make sense to me to separate them like that. Um, You know, Jack was a big proponent of uh, doing weight training with short rest intervals in between to keep the heart rate up so you could benefit from the strength training elements of it and grow muscles while burning fat and getting your heart in shape. And, you know, I like to call that metabolic resistance training. Um, uh, But it just made sense to me. So I have always, through my entire career, I come from a wrestling and judo background, which is basically metabolic training with somebody else trying to hurt you while you're trying to hurt them. Um, (laughs) Right. You know, you're resisting force and your heart and your your lungs are burning and your muscles are working. And and so it just made sense to me to train that way. And I just felt you got an overall better uh, fitness level from that. So I never bought into that separate the two worlds and the industry really started to merge from the weight training or the bodybuilding world and the aerobics world and now you're seeing a lot of that that's the evolution of fitness and what jack preached from (laughs) from day one um uh, and what was also interesting is um how inclusive a program like this can be to all you know to men to women to the young and to the old. And I know this show is primarily about fitness over 50 and, you know, how much, how, how much vitality we can gain from starting when we're young, but even if we don't, and we start when we are 50, how much vitality we can gain from adding the, the weight training um, with short rest periods in to gain that heart conditioning and the muscle conditioning. So, you know, philosophically, that's what I got from Jack. That's what I've always preached. And I've watched the industry grow because those two worlds of weightlifting and aerobics started to fuse and uh, really take off to benefit uh, the population. Yeah, one of the things that amazes me is people are always looking for the the newest fad, the latest and greatest thing to go do as exercise. And right. yet, when you really look at it, and again, tying it back to Jack, as I we were talking about off air before we came on, I've been watching a few of Jack's old shows from the 50s, and... Yeah. What's new is old, right? That we're what we're thinking we're inventing now. Jack was doing 50, 60, 70 years ago. Um, Mm -hmm. yep, the basics are there for a reason because they work. And as you said earlier, Jack invented a lot of this stuff, um, definitely was a proponent of it. And it just amazes me how everybody's looking for the newest thing, but what's tried and true is tried and true for a reason. Um, you know, what do you think? Like someone in their 50s as a trainer, uh, as a Hall of Fame trainer, no doubt. Um, what do you think should be the primary focus for someone maybe who's not been working out, looking to just get a little bit healthier, less aches and pains, that type of thing? What, what would be your general philosophy? And also, what would Jack's be? 
Well, movement, movement, getting blood flowing. He, he um, uh, one of the cool things about doing this project is that we found a um, treasure trove of articles that Jack had written for a national publication um, whose publisher died before his work had ever got published. So uh, Elaine pulled those out of the vault, and we we actually uh, put those in Pride and Discipline. So there's some you know, articles and writings of Jack's from 50 plus years ago that we have put into the book. And if you read them today, you would think they were just written last week. They're still so relevant. One of them talks about uh, blood flow and how movement generates blood flow and how blood flow is life. So what I would tell you is, you know, going all the way again back to Jack, uh, is that get up and move because uh, whether it's just walking and it can be a short or a long walk, whatever you can do, start where you are. Uh, and, you know, just as we as trainers have to, we have to meet our clients where they are, because some of them emotionally are struggling, physically are struggling. We have to listen. Um, you know, hearing and listening are different. You can hear something without really you know, getting it. But if you are listening to what they're saying, sometimes it's through their body language, then you can start to really incorporate what they really need into a program rather than just a cookie cutter program. So it starts with listening to your clients, understanding where they are and being able to meet them at that very point in time um, and just get them moving, getting the blood flow through the body because blood flow circulation is life. So I would say just start at the very basics of getting circulation going through the body and baby steps. If you notice on a lot of those shows that you were talking about, um, uh, you know, Jack used water bottles. You know, he mm -hmm. used uh, the simple everyday books for weights. It doesn't have yep. to be, you know, something made of metal that has uh, five, uh, number five or 10 or a hundred on it. It can be something that just is a little bit of resistance and then using the muscles the way they were intended to move uh, with basic flexion and extension. Um, I think sometimes we try to overthink something that is so simple and movement yep. is simple. Uh, so that would be just going back to the very basics of simple movement, which will then generate blood flow, which is circulation, which is life. Yeah, one of the things that struck me when I was watching one of his shows is he was doing um, a sit to stand, a simple sit to stand and, and you know, with knees pressed together, basically a chair squat. Um, and but the way he was describing it and he was making it so simple in his explanation and the why behind doing it, which is a thing a lot of trainers don't do. That's one, something I try and focus on is we're not, we're not just doing this exercise because there's an exercise to be done. Here's why we're doing it. And that, that's one of the strengths I think that he had. Um, and I think indirectly or directly it's affected me and such a simple moment or movement, excuse me, as a, you know, a sit to stand impacts so many people. And he was saying, don't rock forward. I mean, he was given every cue you, that I've ever given. Um, it just speaks to, again, as I said earlier, what's old is tried and true. And, and Jack was a master, I think, at explaining it to the average person. Would you agree yeah. with that? Communication. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, communication um, is again, something that you would think on paper is, is very simple, but a lot of people have a hard time connecting, um, you know, and connection is part of communication and it's not just the verbal part of it, but it's that visual and seeing how people are reacting. And, and um, you know, Jack had that gift of being able to, to connect with people. And, um, uh, it, you know, it's a gift that I think that uh, sometimes you're just born with. Sometimes, you know, you, you can work toward that. But he was just a gifted young man and grew into a gifted old man uh, and shared those gifts with the world. Uh, of communication and being able to resonate. You know, not only um, did he start the first gym, uh, the first modern day health club, but he was the first to work with women and weights. He was the first mm. to work with athletes and weights. He was the first to work with the disabled 
and ways. So, you know, he, he was all about inclusivity. He didn't care whether you were short or tall, a man or a woman, black or white. It was all about the mission of helping people help themselves. That was his mission in those words, to help people help themselves through exercise and nutrition. A very simple message and one that now I have taken on to further uh, to help others. And again, it's so simple that uh, right. sometimes we overthink things. But, you know, like you were talking about sitting down and standing up, you know, we had to name it the squat. <laughs> but it's yeah. sitting down and standing up, basically. <laughs> um, and you but can do a lot it, of different versions of it, but uh, it's sitting down and standing up. Well, it's funny that you use that as an example because... When I was going to physical therapy for my knee, that that's one of the rehab um, exercises that we had to do, a sit to stand. And right. as people age and they have maybe, you know, hip surgery or whatever, that is one thing because it's a functional exercise. You have to sit down and you have to stand up. So to be able to do it correctly without rocking. And it's funny that Jack LaLanne did that way back when. And here, therapists are thinking it's the greatest and latest. I and, think they invented know, it in many cases. Yeah, it's been around forever. But when you look back at watching some of his shows, uh, a lot of it is functional exercise. And it's stuff that we need to use and do every single day. And if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. That's so, yeah, it goes back to the circulation. When you move, you circulate blood. Exactly. Circulation is life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And again, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. Right, exactly. And like you, you touched upon with the exercise equipment at home, it doesn't have to be a weight with a five, a 10 or a hundred on it. Um, it uh, a metal frying pan or cast iron somebody was using when uh during covid you know i think a lot of people at that point were able to get creative uh with finding something in their home that they can work out with because you can right. and even looking at all the videos that jack has done especially in the 50s this stuff wasn't out there so body weight stuff so i think his stuff was great to look at what was his favorite exercise do you know offhand well, it's funny because um, uh, his, his name being Jack, and he was always uh, very famous for doing the jumping jacks. That would be ah. the yeah. so, um, <laughs> And so I think, you know, just because of that, uh, he, he really popularized the jumping jacks. Um, and so I, I think that would probably be right up at the top of the list. But he was also a world record holder in push-ups and pull-ups. And wow. uh, one of the, the records that he... Um, had, I want to say it was in 1945 on a television show. He went on and did um, a, a thousand pull-ups and a thousand push-ups in an hour and 21 minutes. Wow. Now, why don't you just think about that for a moment <laughs> and think how long it would take you to do a thousand <laughs> pull-ups and a thousand <laughs> push-ups. And I can just tell you, uh, full disclosure here, it would take me a heck of a lot longer than that. <laughs> Perhaps uh -huh. over the course of days, not an hour right. and 21 minutes to, to, to match that feat. But again, that was another, he was, I believe, 45, uh, 1945 when he did that one. Uh, but also, if you look um, at some of the feats of strength and endurance that he did after the age of 50, um, it really makes you shake your head, first of all, and then your jaw drops in amazement. Um, at some of the feats of strength and endurance. And again, this is not just after the age of 50, but well after the age of 50. He liked to do birthday milestone events. Wow. So you know, when he was 60 and 65 and 70, he started doing them when he was 40. Um, but to top it off, when he was 70 years of age, so, you know, those of you listening that are feeling old at 50, uh, I want you to think about this. Add 20 years to that and think when you're 70 years of old, uh, at 70 years of age. So Jack set out on a journey to swim a mile and a half in the Long Beach Harbor with his hands handcuffed, oh. his feet shackled, basically handcuffed as well pulling 70 boats 
with 70 people, one person per boat, for a mile and a half at age 70. Mind Think about that. It, it really is mind-boggling. And that's part of, you know, what he had always talked about is, is that six inches between your ears, you know, that mindset. And that's yeah. where it all begins because you have to go to a different place up here within that six inches between your ears to be able to do something like that. I mean, it's one thing to swim a mile and a half, first of all, in Long Beach Harbor, which is, you know, you're battling cold water and current. It's not like you're yep. getting in a pool swimming lap. But then you put on top of it, handcuffing yourself, shackling your feet, your ankles, and then pulling 70 boats with 70 people. And it's almost one of those things, the first time you read it or hear it, you think, uh, yeah, it's a joke, right? But it's not. It's not. Wow. And again, we, we show all those feats of strength of him doing after the age of 50 uh, in the book. And um, I, I still marvel at that. And, you know, again, I have been a fan of Jack Fur uh, as long as I can remember. But when I think about some of those things, whether it be at age 30 or age 70, it just baffles the mind to think that you can go there up here. And then your body take over and actually do it. That's exactly and, right. Exactly right. And I think that a lot of people need to, to really look at that and understand that maybe you can't tow 70 boats through yeah. through the ocean or a harbor. Maybe you can't you know, do a thousand push-ups in an hour, but you can accomplish amazing things if you set your yeah. mind to it. It's really what it comes down to. It's, it's the only limitations you have are the ones you place on yourself. It's why I know Greg talks about it when he talks with people. Lori and I talk about it when we talk to people is the only thing stopping you from being whatever you want to be is you. And when you take on a, a challenge like that, whatever the challenge might be, the mm -hmm. feeling you get afterward, that's what it's about. Um, you know, and I, I use that in my own competitions that I've done. I don't, the training and all that, it's work. I, I freely admit it. But when you, the amount of training Jack had to have done to be able to accomplish a feat like that, or he did the Alcatraz swim too, if I remember correctly. He did. Um, he, he did yeah. that when they, when people told him that it was impossible to do. He went and did it. He uh, did. Nothing is impossible if you set your mind to it. You may not be able to succeed to that level. I'll grant that, but it's amazing. Uh, good time to take our second break. So we'll, we'll I'll hand it off to TK, and then we'll be back to finish up with Greg. Yep. Get ready, Greg. All right. Let me throw it back over to Lori. Uh, she's got a question. I do. All right. So TK, that one picture of Greg on oh his crutches would be great to just post right now. <laughs> uh oh. Um, so Greg, uh, tell us about your ninja training. <laughs> okay. Well, so I always like to say, you know, Jack was a big advocate of swimming. He loved, loved, loved swimming. And as much as he loves swimming, I hate swimming. So I always like to say. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't like to swim, but I like to fly. And so I have go. taken up at the ripe uh, uh, young age of 59, uh, about three years ago, I took up the sport of American Ninja Warrior training. Um, yep. And so I, I like to swing from the ceilings, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, one day as I was swinging from the ceiling, I missed my catch point and came down and landed with my foot half on a mat and half off the mat, which blew the bottom of my tibia off. <laughs> nice. And a 10-foot fall has a way of doing that. And so I lost some cartilage, uh, broke the bone uh, the, the, at the bottom of the tibia, and I've got some really cool uh, uh, souvenirs from that now, some screws that are holding it all together. And... Um, uh, a lovely boot that I um, wear for just one more week ahead of schedule on my recovery and everything is going really well. Right. But, you know, the way I look at it, sometimes when you play on the playground, you fall. And uh, the key right. is just, you know, having a good positive mental outlook, uh, have not experienced any pain or discomfort. Uh, I've just had to back off a little bit on the training, but I can promise you this. The minute I get this boot off 
and I'm cleared by my doctor, the very first thing I will do is that movement that I broke my ankle on. And the reason for that is because, well, the the reason for that, I think it's important not to live in fear um, because that's that's, that's a bad headspace to be in. And so I've already visualized. And again, I learned, you know, a lot of this from Jack had to visualize the things that he did, including the Alcatraz swim and the, you know, the 70 boat swim and all those things. He talked about the importance of actually seeing it before you do it, whether it be buying a piece of property and having a vision for it or doing a feat of strength and endurance. Um, And so I, in my head, have already envisioned not only doing the movement that I broke my ankle on, that's the very first thing I'm doing just so I can get that behind me and out of the way and not let that, you know, live rent free in my head. But I've actually envisioned stepping up my training and doing things at even a higher level um, because I know in my head I can't. And so I think, you know, just let's let's eliminate the fear, go for that thing that, you know, that I did. I just messed up. I was tired. It was, it was just it just happens sometimes. That's life. Um, but I've got so much to look forward to going forward um, that it, it in no way uh, will slow me down. So I'm just I'm excited and looking forward to it because I've done it up here. I can see it and I visualized it and I'm ready to actually do it now. So well, should we I, expect to see you on the show? Are you that thinking you're right? That, that's where we're going. That's the intention. I love it. We I can't love wait. It. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask um, is, and, and you can run with it how you wish, but what is your favorite, let's say either saying or story about Jack? What is the one that Greg just looks at and goes, that's that's it right there? Yeah, well, there's one, certainly one quote that uh, uh, stands above them all that just because it, it, it is so important, I think it will speak to, to your audience, too, of being over 50, because, you know, there, there is uh, health, fitness, um, and there is fiscal or money fitness, right? And Jack used to always say, and this is my favorite quote, he would always say your health account and your bank account are the same thing. The more you put in, the more you can take out. And that's just like as we age and if we have done it right over 50 and 60 and 70, that we have been able to put money away that we can start taking out for retirement if that's what people choose to do. And our health account is the same way. And I'm living that now with this broken ankle because I have put in a lot of deposits through the years through my health account. And that is now paying dividends as I'm going through this injury, because I am staying in shape through the endless rope, because I can do my cardio uh, exercise with the endless rope. And so I'm still making deposits into my health account, even with a broken ankle. And, you know, my mind and my body are going to come together as soon as I get this boot off. And, uh, and I will be able to draw from that um, health account. So yeah, your health account, your bank account, they're the same things. The more you put in, the more you can take out. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. So, Greg, how can people order your book? It is available on Amazon and just type in the search engine pride and discipline with that prompt. The book will come up either in digital uh, ebook, Kindle for, format or the paperback. And um, uh, we're just so excited. It is by far uh, our biggest book ever through my publishing company. I own a publishing company called Scripter Publishing Group. And uh, so we published that through my uh, publishing company. And it is by far, by 20-fold, our biggest book ever, just because I think um, the message is so much broader than just health and fitness. It's just about life. And uh, there's so much to learn through this book. Absolutely. I think I've bought every book you've ever written, Greg. And I know you actually, when we were at a couple of conferences, I won a couple of times you were, you were giving them away. Um, I encourage everyone to go download this book, buy this book, buy all of Greg's books. I'll put links to the Amazon so that people can just at the bottom of the show notes and then they can just go over and get it because, um, it's an outstanding book. Why don't we, uh, so if, um, People other than us want to reach you, <laughs> Greg Justice. Uh, what is the best way to reach you when you're not 
flying through the air or, you know, <laughs> at some <laughs> competitions? Uh, well, directly through my website, which is uh, gregjustice.com. And uh, you can certainly connect with me there. And I would love to hear stories uh, that, that you may have of, of overcoming obstacles and, uh, you know, prevailing and um, uh, doing things to deposit into your health account. And, and I just love hearing from people um, about changing their lives through health and fitness. That's great. All right. So we've got a couple minutes left. I have a question that I want to ask you. Kind of already, I think, answered it, but maybe you can get a little bit more detail. But what is your favorite exercise, Greg, or way to exercise and why? Well, I do love resistance band training um, because it can can go with you. I travel. In fact, I've got my little backpack here and believe it or not i've got my entire gym in this backpack along with four days of clothes and a computer um i travel light but uh, i always travel with a resistance band um, because i can hook it into a door in my hotel room and uh, i can train anywhere with it so um pushing and pulling uh squatting and running and and you know all that stuff with the resistance band uh so i would have to say that apparatus that tool uh, i enjoy just because of how versatile is uh, versatile it is and it can go with me anywhere now from a playing standpoint when i get on the american ninja warrior uh, uh courses i love doing the salmon ladder i don't know if people will know what that is but it's basically doing a pull-up with a moving bar where you keep going climbing higher uh, while you're doing pull-ups and then you work your way back down and then you swing to another side and do that um, so you're basically doing pull-ups. I love doing pull-ups, but I also love taking it to the next level and doing a pull-up and adding another component to it, which is a moving pull-up. Hopefully that answered your question. Oh, it does. And and I've looked at the salmon ladder. I've thought about the salmon ladder. I would love to try it, but I know I would get one shot at it, and that would be the end of it for me. Uh, gravity wins every time. <laughs> gravity always will win <laughs> on that. Um, yeah, so I mean, that I love hearing that because you are you are not a 20-year-old man. Um, I'm, you I'm not. It on. <laughs> and and that's, it speaks to what I think our audience, the message we want our audience to have, which is age is just a number. You can do anything you want. Greg is a perfect example of that. He is a highly successful person, and yet he still challenges himself and wants to do amazing things, even things that I sit and shake my head at, my friend. Um, <laughs> but that's okay, right? <laughs> so I'm not just you know, finding things to have fun, to, you know, have fun with it. That's yeah, right. exercise doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun. Yes. All right, let's uh, throw it for another final break, and then we'll come back and wrap things up. And we're back to Living Fed After 50. Wow, what an amazing show it it's was. been. It's I cannot believe it is over already. We could go yep. another three hours, I'm sure. Yep. Um, special thanks to our guest, Greg Justice, an amazing man, as I've said many times. And please, Go get that book, Pride and Discipline, The Legacy of Jack LaLanne. Uh, I have it. I've started reading it. As I said earlier, I'm about a third of the way through, and I, it's absolutely intriguing. And I, Greg hinted at this, and I think I did too. It's not It's not just about health and fitness. It's about the way to look at life. It really, truly is. Um, let's talk about next week's show. All so right. go ahead, Lori. So next week we have Bjorn Mohagen on from Best Choice Roofing. He's going to talk to us about tips and tricks about hiring contractors for roof repairs. Um, An important thing here in Southeastern it North, is, North well, Carolina. Really anywhere. So we look at, you know, how does that pertain to living fit after 50? I don't know if my roof is leaking. I'm stressed and now I'm not healthy. So, there you go. Yeah, um, there's part of it, right? I mean, it's a good way to get some questions answered for, you know, home repairs. Yeah, I mean, as part of this thing, when we're doing this show, it's not just about 
health and fitness per se. It's having a healthy life. And one of the things that we want to do is give information on various things that you can use. So to take some of the stress out of your life. And that's what Bjorn will be helping us with yep. next week. Uh, just a reminder again, if you're listening to us on Facebook or YouTube, please like and share it. The more that you do that, the more people they show it to. And it helps us spread the word about the show and helps us to help more people um, again download the app the big talker network we are primarily focused on southeastern north carolina but it is worldwide you can be in antarctica if there's an internet connection you can listen to the show um, don't forget our website livingfitafter50.com and just throwing it out there we're on youtube facebook tiktok we're all over the place we are i think that's it it is so thank you greg justice for joining us today and uh, until next week. Until next week, everybody have an awesome week. Go out and enjoy life.